Yeah, mm-hmm. and I love a lot going on in my mouth, you know? <laughs> like, it's just like you get so many... <laughs> Hi, and welcome to the Savage Podcast. I'm Rose, also known as Cheap Lazy Vegan on YouTube. And I'm Daniel, one of your favorite guest stars on Cheap Lazy Vegan's YouTube channel. We're two friends who love to talk about the latest trending topics. So get comfortable and join us while we give our savage take on just about everything. You are currently listening to the previous episode of this podcast, but if you would like to listen to this week's episode and get some exclusive content, go over to patreon.com slash the savage podcast. <laughs> you want to finish that orange of yours? <laughs> the unprofessionalism. Guys, Daniel's eating an orange, but hello. Welcome back to the savage podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm your host, Rose, and that's it. And I'm Dan. <laughs> Actually, Guys, speaking of that, mm, what, what are we speaking of? Someone did comment in the comment section. <gasps> and what what kind of shit did they say? Oh, some shit, Rose. <laughs> oh, was it bad? No, no, it wasn't bad. It was just like basically, <laughs> and it was kind of nice. It was like, um, we need to update our intro. Oh, I saw that. Okay. Yeah. It was a little... I don't think they understood. I think I commented back on it because mm. I was like, I don't think you understand the intro. Like, mm. you know, because <laughs> basically in the intro, guys, the point in the intro, we say... Uh, I mean, to be fair, we do need to update the intro. We so do, I, w- yeah. I did say, you're right. We need to update the intro. But I think you're misunderstanding what the intro is saying. Because basically, they were like, oh, um, Daniel is definitely not a guest star. Yeah. He's, you know, a co-host. And I was like, yeah. yes, he is a co-host. We said guest star on my YouTube channel, mm-hmm. Cheap Lazy Vegan, which is not this podcast. Although I haven't guest starred on your channel in a long time. Exactly. So, so you're definitely not a co-host of my YouTube channel. No, definitely. You're definitely a co-host of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, he is. So yes, yeah, so we we yes. So uh, guys, the intro does not mean Daniel is a guest star of this podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm a full time member. He's he's a full full time member. I is. He is. I'm a co-host. He is a co-host of this podcast. He isn't yeah. a guest star. Mm-hmm. I just meant he's a guest star sometimes on my YouTube channel, which you yeah. definitely need to come back on the YouTube channel. Soon. We, we need to do a mukbang. We really do. What are you going to make for me, Rose? Oh, God damn, Daniels. Be tiring as hell. We should, well, you know what one I really want to re- redo? Is the what hot pot. What do you want to redo? You really want that hot pot. Oh, because it was so good. Although, you know, I probably need to do a, a Christmas recipe soon. Mm. So maybe we can do a little Christmas mukbang. I, I like that. What do you think about that? I like the sound of what that. What are you doing Friday? Roses. Oh, God damn. Because I'm going to film this week. Mukbang with you. <gasps> I need to check my calendar it's a day. first. Sam Daniel, you got something more important than eating with me? No, I might have to. Bring Tom, I might have to bring Thomas though. <laughs> you can bring Thomas. Oh, guys, we have a guest star. We have a we. Oh, goddamn, we got uh, Daniel as my guest star of this podcast, <laughs> yeah. and then we got guest star number two, Which is- uh, who is underneath this pillar. <laughs> Thomas, <laughs> that's uh, our friend's dog, and mm-hmm. Daniel is dog sitting him at the I moment. Am, yeah. He is very cute and very tiny. He is really cute. And you know, I have to say one, so thi- one thing about like dog sitting, because like obviously like I just never had dogs growing up or anything. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> it's so nice to come home and like. This, why do you think people like dogs? I know. I can see. Like literally I come home and he is so excited to see me. Mm-hmm. He like greets me with kisses and oh. is like super hyper. And like yeah. he, he's so hyper that he actually can't control himself. Yeah. So he'll start like running around as well. And he's so just like, cute. he's like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. He zoomies. Yes. He'll, he'll instantly like zoomies. And then he'll come back and he'll calm down for a minute and like I'll start petting him and then he'll like zoom off again. And I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> this is the this is the beauty of having a dog. Mm-hmm. And he also like cuddles with me. Yes. So but, but like it's funny because he'll like right when it's getting around bedtime, he'll like kind of walk towards the bedroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he'll keep poking his head out to see like, are you coming? Oh. Like what's going on? <laughs> and then if I'm watching TV or doing something yeah. and obviously I'm taking my time, he'll like go find another spot to lay down. Yeah. And sometimes he'll come in, out in the living room and like lay down in the living room. <laughs> the second I turn the light off, I go into the bedroom. He knows it's time. He knows. It's, it's He's the there. routine. He's there. He's like, yep, ready for bed. It's the routine, Daniel. Yeah. D- uh, dogs are creatures of habit. This is true. Kind of like you. <laughs> you say that I'm an old man. Is... Daniel will be a creature of habit. One of the nice things about being downtown, too, is I've just frequented Rose's Cafe. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I've made up for lost time. I think I've eaten there well, like because, seven times. So, Daniel, you, <laughs> you have, which we appreciate the mm-hmm. uh, small mm-hmm. business support. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Daniel used to live like right beside my cafe. Yeah. And like so, two blocks or something. Like two blocks, like very, like barely, not even five minutes. Mm-hmm. And so, used to come like relatively fre- frequently. I used to come probably almost every weekend. 
Yeah, you probably came at least once a week. Yeah, at once, a, once, once a, week. a week I would yeah. like, you know, after the gym, I'd yeah. go get something and then I'd go back to my house because it was so close. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and, it was so and what else, Daniel? And it'd be delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so he used to come a lot and then he moved like quite a bit further. I mean, yeah. it's still walking distance, but it's definitely not like convenient distance. Yeah. But to be fair, I still come sometimes after the gym Yeah, yeah the you weekends. still come. You still yeah. come. Um, but now, like right now, wh- where he's watching um, the dog, mm-hmm. it's like literally like a one minute walk. Not even. It's like, like across 30 seconds. Yeah. So <laughs> basically every, every day I'm like, Oh, hi Daniel. <laughs> yeah. I know. I was like getting, getting food last time I could see like Rose. She's like on her computer. I was like, Whoa. <laughs> God damn. Anyways. It'd be, it'd be nice as hell though. It'd be nice. I love you, it. You need to move back. Oh, I mean, it wouldn't be good for my waistline, you know, but well, actually our food, our food is pretty healthy. Yeah. I think it's we, like, yeah, we make pretty like, um, uh, like kind of home cooked style food where it's not like we yeah. don't use like super like basically whatever we make I'm happy to eat it like yeah. in a meal like yeah. it's not really like unhealthy food well and, and guys if you do make it down to the cafe <laughs> I have a few recommendations so obviously the bulgogi burrito that's like my favorite it's yes, so bulgogi burrito. fucking good I could <laughs> eat that, that every shit. single day you kind of do I- <laughs> You're out of me on this podcast. But although you have been getting a, a, a variety this I week, have, yeah. you've gotten the Benny a few times. Oh, so I have a vegan good. version of the Benny, which is like one of our very popular dishes. I can see why. Um, it's also, delicious. the Bugoli burrito is also very popular, which yeah. I also love as well. It's very good. It's just like it's got mm-hmm. a good flavor. Like that's, There's a lot going on. There is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I love a lot going on in my mouth, you know? <laughs> like it's just like you get so many. <laughs> Rose, get your mind out of the gas. Damn, I'm good. Or... Damn, this be PJ. I was meaning like I just okay, love all the, the, ex- mm-hmm. the, explosion the explosions of in your blade. mouth. First. You like an explosion? Oh god damn! Must you be nasty, <laughs> woman? Um, but it it is. It, it's it's got so many like and and the it's that that Korean like special sauce it's or something. So good, right? yeah, yeah. And then um, well, you've been you also had the the street toast. Yeah, the street toast. That's is our good. new thing, which I also really like as well. Yeah, that is actually mm. uh, that's up there now. It's no, now I have like three favorites. Yeah. I mean, bulgogi is always going to be number one for me, yeah. but you know, you're definitely like, um, you, you prefer like wraps or sandwiches or burgers or things like that. Hey? I do. I am. Yeah. I, well, you're actually, a wap boy at heart. You is. is. That's I lo- how I nari. Honestly, I love a wrap. You love a wrap. I like, I, you know, Everywhere I, you go, you want a wrap. I do. I, do <laughs> want, I don't know. Like, can we get the chicken Caesar wrap? I'm like, Daniel, can we not be basic? <laughs> I'm like, I really want to try this menu item. And Rose always wants to share things. And she's like, oh, for fuck's sake, Daniel. Well, this one time we're in like, where is it? Vancouver or something. <laughs> and we're in this like really nice. Ve- I can't remember where we were. Yeah. We were in a vegan restaurant. And like the menu is huge. Okay. Menu is huge. And like, I know some people are going to be like, what's wrong with that? <laughs> I know. But like, you know, when I'm in a vegan restaurant, I want to try something like, you know, really mm-hmm. like whatever. Okay. And then yeah. Dad is like, can we get the French toast? <laughs> <laughs> Which like. Fair. Well, well like, we were. It was. We were at. I think it was at meat for brunch or something. I want to say it must have been. Wait, was it meat? I can't remember. I can't remember. I, we were somewhere for brunch. Yeah. I think it was brunch. Was it brunch? I mean, you, it must have been brunch because you wanted the French toast. Yeah, I was like, I'm gonna get the French toast. You're like, what? <laughs> I'm so judgmental. And then I was like, well, maybe, I'll, or maybe I'll get the like grilled cheese. Oh and you're yeah. Like, what? <laughs> Those were the two. The two options. The most like kind of like like what like children would get kind of <laughs> no but you know the thing with wraps i just like okay i actually pref- i do i mean i love a wrap as yeah well. don't I pref- get me wrong i prefer because like you know like burgers like, like don't get me wrong i love a burger as well but it's like a lot of bread and stuff mm. whereas i feel like a wrap it's like the perfect ratio because it's just a thin layer of like bread with like deliciousness inside Yeah, but sometimes you want that bread like sometimes you want that dough you want that like carby this is true. goodness so it depends on the the mood you want that dar <laughs> you want that dar <laughs> yeah um it depends on the mood Daniel mm. it really depends on the mood it does but a, a rap honestly if there's any single men on this podcast wanting a <laughs> way to my heart make me a delicious rap I mean don't get me wrong I love a rap but sometimes I feel like you know I'm like a rap I can make it home like yeah. I don't know I feel like that sometimes yeah but I feel like I'm not good at making wraps at home like I never make them really? as good as like in the store that's true I mean, I mean because like you know there's like a lot of elements to making a wrap yeah delicious. you need to have like that press do you ever as make well? french toast at home Daniel no Maybe you should. I, I probably could. I you know that's the thing. French toast. It's like I would make maybe at home, and like, I mean, have you ever had a French toast where you were like, "This is the best thing ever"? Mm-mm. <laughs> I never have. But you I were don't craving know. a French toast. Definitely. Yeah, like I mean, yeah. I and have... I was judging the hell out of you. You were. You were. <laughs> this is making me want to go for like brunch now. I know we should go for brunch. Should we go to Namo? When? The weekend. 
Oh, God damn, Daniels. Before you go? Before I go. Uh, possibly. Let's okay. discuss after. We'll, we'll think about it. I mean, it. apparently we're doing mukbang. We're fucking, you know, oh, what? Yeah. I got to wear a swimsuit <laughs> soon and you're making me eat all kinds of shit. Like before you go to Hawaii, Rose, let's go for brunch. <laughs> let's go for drinks. Um, oh, there were also like a, a bunch of people from work are doing this thing called 12 Patios of uh, Christmas. Oh, God. I don't know if I'm going to go for sure yet or not. Um, so is this a pre-recordation, what we're doing right now? Yes. Yeah. This so guys, pre- this is a pre-recordation. Mm-hmm. We're recording this a week earlier because I have to go. Well, this one actually might even come out two weeks because oh, right. Sunday okay. we're going to do like a topical so, one. Yeah, so yeah, this is not going to be a topical situation. Yeah, this, this is, is going to be a g- deep dive yeah. into... This episode is brought to you by Compliment. Compliment Essential is the ultimate multivitamin made for and by plant-based eaters. Optimize your health with the eight critical vitamins, minerals, and omega-3s, proven hard to get through a plant-based diet alone, all in one easy to take capsule. I've been taking Compliment Essential for months now, and it makes it so easy to make sure I'm filling in all my nutrient gaps. If you're looking for the multivitamin for plant-based eaters, make sure to check out Compliment Essential. Go to lovecompliment.com. That's L-O-V-E-C-O-M-P-L-E-M-E-N-T.com and use code SAVAGEPODCAST, S-A-V-E-G, podcast, to get 15% off your order and save even more by subscribing so you never miss taking your vitamins. Be sure to check out their other awesome products like vegan protein powder, gut nurture, and daily greens. Once again, that's lovecompliment.com and use the code SAVAGEPODCAST to save 15% off compliment products. Thank you so much to Compliment for supporting this podcast. Thank you. Oh God, what are we the talking about, Rose? The cult <gasps> that is... The cult sensation. <laughs> it's not a sensation. No. Um, um, so it's a Netflix show. Oh it's called... Expo- is it Exposing? I thought it's Escaping. Escaping Twin Flames. Okay, so we're going to talk about this. God damn, it'd be wild as hell. I mean, I, at first I started watching it and I was like, what am I watching? Yeah, yeah, it's very confusing. And then as you get into it, you're like, what am I watching? <laughs> the and whole th- time you're like, what am I watching? And then at the end, you're like, what the fuck did I just watch? Exactly. That's that's a good summary of, yeah. the, of, the, of the show. Because like the whole time, like, you know, as people were talking about it, it was like, it was like, it seemed almost like not real. I don't know how to describe okay, it. It so felt let, like shall very... We, shall we start? Shall we jump yeah. into it? So what? what is... <laughs> so basically... Rose, what would be a twin flame? So, okay. Essentially, this show, this Netflix show, it's only three episodes. Yeah. And it's Mini really series. fucked up. Highly recommend watching it. Although it's like kind of like fucked up. It's very strange. So some people might find it triggering. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. But basically, um, it's these two people, right? There's this dude and like dude his dad. wife. <laughs> Who just kind of sits there. Yeah. Like, I don't really understand. Anyway. So, but they're supposed to be twin flames. So yeah. she has to be there. Occasionally she says something and then he's like, shut and, up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so fucked up. Yeah. So I guess it's like this random dude and his wife. And I guess when they met. Okay. So guys, there's gonna be spoilers. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyway. So. Yeah. I, spoilers alert. If you haven't spoilers seen it, guys, alert. pause it. Go watch it. And go then listen to the it. podcast. Yeah. Anyway, it's only three episodes. And yeah. So anyway, so this dude and this wife, mm-hmm. um, or he met this woman who at the time he said something like she was really spiritual. Yeah. And she was like into the whole like woo woo shit. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he didn't say it like that, but I said it like that. (laughs) Yeah. And so he, she's really into this woo woo shit. It seemed like he always wanted to be like rich. Yeah. And And he was like, kind of a, he he felt kind of skeezy from the beginning. Like he's like, he wanted to get rich any way he could do it. And apparently I think before they started this twin flame thing, he was doing all kinds of shit. He tried to do some other kind of like, um, something online yeah. things like kind of scammy culty sort of things <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it yeah. just never took off yeah like yeah. nothing legit it didn't sound legitimate oh yeah okay, and all right? of it sounded like sketchy as fuck exactly. I can't remember what it was but it was like, like if you want to be shit. successful online that's fine that's great just do it in a legitimate non-scammy non-culty way please exactly so basically so then these two, they met a fucking toxic ass combination, yeah. woo woo and fucking scammy as shit. Okay. Mm-hmm. That is a recipe for a cult. So mm. they, I don't know. I can't remember exactly how it got started. Well, I think what had happened is. Are we, because, are we filming a mukbang, Daniel? We is. I, <laughs> I hope you guys like my sensational orange. Um, but I think, I think if I recall correctly, the way that it happened was because he is an opportunist and he's always looking for these like ways to like make money and shit. She's very much into like the woo woo and all this stuff. And he kind of like saw an opportunity in there. He's like, Ooh, these like woo woo people. Like (laughs) let's get in there. Oh yeah, for sure. And I think it didn't, I can't remember if it started as twin flame or if it started as something more like spiritual and then it turned into I Twin Flame. I think it flame. was more so from the kind of beginning. Actually, who knows, right? Mm. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. But basically, from the early on in this documentary, they're, so they're kind of 
interviewing different people that were part of it. Mm. So it's really hard to like, um, obviously they don't interview these two because they are the culprits. <laughs> and they've refused obviously for an interview. Uh-huh. So this documentary is about the people that have escaped this cult. Mm-hmm. So at first you're like, what the fuck's going on? Right. Yeah. Um, and then, so they're interviewing different people. And this one girl that was like one of the main first members of the cult. Yeah. Uh, she was like throughout the whole thing, she was being interviewed and she was basically saying that she was like in, I think she met this guy at like a grocery store, uh, some, somewhere like kind of like organically. Mm. They were dating for a while and then they split up, I guess. Yes. And then she was like depressed about it. And for some reason, exactly. I can't remember how this happened, but she started talking to this cult, these cult leaders. Well, I think what had happened was again, <laughs> Let me pull up the Wikipedia. <laughs> I think, I think what had happened was she, mm-hmm. um, she broke up with this guy and then she found the twin flame. Like, you right. Know. Cause she was upset about the breakup. Yeah. She was so really, she sad, really upset. thought like they had a really strong connection and mm. you know, and she was very, very sad about the breakup. So I remember her saying that. So yeah. And then because of that, mm. she's looking for some kind of answer, you know? Yeah. And basically what these guys were doing. So what the whole concept of the twin flame yeah. was is they started this like online community it started as kind of like an online community. And then what they would do is they talked about like finding your twin flame, essentially like finding your soulmate yeah. and how there's like one twin flame out there for everybody. This, well, it, it, it morphs. It starts as one thing <laughs> yeah. and it, kind of morphs yeah, over yeah, yeah, time yeah, yeah. but initially it was like we're gonna help you find your twin flame they guaranteed if you joined their like 12 month yeah. program that they would f- you would find your twin flame and they also throughout the, the throughout the things obviously they did all these like courses and all this different stuff that you could do coaching and all this stuff which the couple started at first just themselves and they're making shit tons of money because people were paying like three thousand dollars a month for these courses it's so fucked up yeah so yeah so uh, the wikipedia doesn't really have like the full mm. like breakdown yeah um, but let's see. Anyway, I can Yeah. So it's not going to, we, we're just going to have to go by memory. Yeah, Sorry yeah. if some of the, you know, information we're kind of, it's a bit blurry for us maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like they were looking, she was looking for some kind of answer, yeah. some kind of soulmate. She's like, Oh my God, I really feel like this guy is like whatever. So she joins this thing. Mm. And at the time, I don't know if it was already like a cult or more just like, I think they I th- were, I think at that time when she just joined, maybe doing like, just like being like, oh, like we're yeah. gonna help you find someone, like a exactly. dating coach. Because it, it, it kind of escalated quite quickly. Yeah, because it started as something. I don't want to say wholesome because it never was because it was always yeah. a predatory element. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like with this guy, Jeff was the main guy. Is he obviously saw an opportunity mm. here to prey on people looking for love because everybody wants to find love. Like, yeah. you know, I, that like any business that's in that, it's like they know that people are looking for this, right? Yeah. And so they targeted, you know, they would target like desperate people that were like looking for, I don't want to say desperate, but like people that were lonely and they were sad and they <clears> wanted <throat> to meet that, you know, I could see like, I, there's some days that I'm like, oh, I want to meet my twin flame, you know? Right. I wouldn't call it a twin <laughs> yeah, flame. Yeah, yeah, but You wouldn't call it a soulmate. No, but like. So, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Well, I also find it funny that they're calling it like twin flame when it really just means soulmate. It's like I they know. just want to be different or something. Well, they do. And they like, they, the girl changed her name. Oh, yeah. To so be... I just found that they, her okay. name was Megan. Okay. Megan Plante or Plant, yeah. and she changed it to Shalea. Was was that how you said it? I think it was Shal- Shalea. Shalea, maybe yeah. Shalea Divine. <laughs> See, this is another thing. This is how you know people are fucking like just being, you know, shady. Well, because when it's- they changed their name from Megan. Yeah. To Shalea. Yeah. Well, it's because she wanted to sound more spiritual, exactly. holier than now. Exactly. All this stuff. So then basically this is what happened. So they met Jeff and Shalea or mm. Megan. Mm. They met in 2012. They started dating. Shortly afterward, Megan changed her name to Shalea on the advice of her spiritual teacher. So clearly it's mm. like, this is like a thing. It's like, if you mm. want to be a spiritual teacher, you need some kind of, cause that's the thing. It's like, would you listen to someone named Bob? No. Or would, would you listen to someone named like, I don't Shalia. know, Gandhi, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. so, there's already an element of deception there. Okay. Mm. She was like a Reiki teacher, like all kinds of like spiritual, you know, whatever, which again might be fine. I mean, um, eh. I think, I think it's okay. I think, I think the thing with any of this stuff, even like kind of spiritual th- stuff, I sometimes like do it. Cause I think it's more, oh, f- wait, wait, wait what, what spiritual shit do you do? Daniel? Okay. <laughs> Not like do it, but like sometimes I'll do like tarot card readings with my friends <laughs> and like random stuff like this because I actually think it's kind of like more for me. It's more of like a fun element. It's not necessarily that I like necessarily believe everything that's mm. that's being said, but I kind of like to just like have fun with it. Right. Like I don't take it as gospel and be like, I'm right. going to convert <clears throat> and like now become like holier than now. You know what yeah. I mean? Like 
I kind of just like do it as kind of like fun stuff, you know, even, yeah. even, even like horoscopes and shit. Some days I'll be like, Oh, just read me my horoscope. What's, what's on the cards for a fucking Gemini today? You know, <laughs> is my, is my half moon in retrograde? <laughs> So like, like things like, I just, I I find it kind of like more funny. It's funny. I have a laugh. Yeah. You know, I'll I'll be like, oh, I'll think about that. You know, it's like, oh, something, something exciting is going to happen to you today. I'm like, okay, cool. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. But a lot of people take it seriously and that's the issue. Right. And it's, and I do feel like when you are, I don't know, like sometimes I'm like, do you actually believe like these, these spiritual teachers? I'm like, do you actually believe it? Or Mm. are you just taking advantage? Advantage of people. So anyways, the founding. So I did find this um, Mm. thing here. So Twin Flames Universe was founded by Jeff and Shalia Divine. The couple began making YouTube videos together in 20. 2014 so yeah so in, originally they offered the twin flame extension course okay yes, yeah. so i guess initially it started as again not innocent but it started as an online course mm. to discuss the concept of twin flames and basically it was like a somebody described this as a therapeutic spiritual reality show and it cost so in 2020 the classes cost four thousand four hundred and forty four dollars to view and purchase so I guess they still like were selling it in 2020. They still are. <clears throat> I checked their, after the I, documentary, uh, I looked up their website and they still are doing so this. beyond. So that's how it started. Mm. And then it just kind of, and again, already it started shady. Like, what are you selling? How yeah. do you have the credentials? Like, what yeah. the fuck are you selling? Like this is, you're already selling kind of bullshit to be honest. Exactly. Right? But then, so because you're selling bullshit, mm. they need to kind of make themselves legitimate. Yeah. So this is where they start getting extra predatory and, and crazy. Right. Yeah. Because so this lady that was that initially like, you know, um, broke up with this guy that she thought was like potentially her twin flame. She mm. finds this twin flame universe. She brings her little sister into it, which we'll get oh into. Oh That's <gasps> so sad. The whole sister thing oh my is God. so fucking sad. So she brings her little sister who at the time was like 19 years old. Yeah, she was really And young. it's not to blame this lady because I yeah. think she really genuinely thought she was helping her sister. Yeah. Well, and she thought she was helping a lot of people because the thing is this girl, I can't remember what her name was that yeah. came into this is she initially thought, hey, it's going to help me find my twin flame, all this other stuff. And then she, as part of, as this thing built, because initially it was the first course, right? Yeah. And then it built into something new. And then it built into, oh, we're going to start having coaches. Mm-hmm. So like, we're going to get people to coach other people on how to like do this stuff. Like, so, and this girl became one of the coaches that would like take people well, under her. here's the thing. Before she became a coach though. Yeah. So because she was telling them about, because like, again, these Jeff and Shalia. Yeah. They're supposed to be these like fucking, I don't know, dating gurus or whatever the yeah. fuck. Okay. So they'd have like Zoom calls with all these people. <clears throat> exactly. So yeah. they're having all these Zoom calls and they're like, oh, this is how you tw- find your twin flame, all this bullshit. And then this girl is like, um, she probably starts talking about this mm. previous relationship. And then they're like, they just jump on that fucking opportunity. Yep. And they're like, that's, that's your twin flame. That's who your twin flame is. And then they, they make it seem as though they kind of have this like divine understanding of who your twin flame is. So they act like they know who your twin flame is, even though like, uh, before she mentioned this guy, you didn't fucking tell me that, uh, you knew who my twin flame was all of a sudden. Now that I mention him, you know, you know exactly who my twin flame is. Miraculously. Miraculous. It's it's the guy that I just recently dated that I'm not uh, over. So of course that's my twin flame. Yeah. So then they were like, oh, you should go and like find him and date him again. And then somehow she like got him to like agree. And he also got into this cult. Yeah. He joined. So then they like basically become this like like model couple yes of the twin flame universe okay <laughs> it's so ridiculous it's so funny it sounds insane because these yeah. are grown people right yes and i don't want to like knock on them too much because i know that there's some kind of strange psychology with there cults. is there is and that's this is the, this, this, this is the scary thing about the cult so it's like you know the, and, and, and when you're watching the interview with these people like a lot of these people copus mentis people yeah. like they're they're not they're not like you know having like a lot of mental health issues or anything like that they seem like very like you know with it and yep. they get sucked into this somehow. Like it's like there's this weird force of like your mental state that like somehow yep. people are susceptible to cults. Like it, it's and weird. I think, I think it's so interesting because I think we kind of touched on this, but I think it's so interesting that because back in the day before the internet, mm. you kind of had to like physically be in the cult, right? Yeah. Like you're kind of surrounded by the cult people. Oftentimes they'll kind of. Um, they'll isolate you from other people. Yeah. And that's a huge part of being in a cult. Like they'll be like, and they did kind of do this here as well. Yeah. But you know, you're kind of like physically in the presence of the cult. You're physically You'd like there. join a You go to the church. Like you whatever. go, yeah, exactly. And sometimes they'll like make you move somewhere. Yeah. Um, but for the online stuff, I find that even more fascinating because it's like, you know, like you have 
these are people that they they didn't even have near them. Like they mm-hmm. were all doing Zoom calls, okay? Which is crazy because you would think in that, that they would be able to exactly. It would be harder to get into <clears throat> a call only because like you might initially start right. Like let's say I started yeah. some web thing. And I still have my friends here. You but know what I mean? That's the thing. Like, they must not have that much interaction outside of the cult. Yeah, I think that's probably that's what it is. That's the only explanation for it. Yeah. Because I feel like it's like, it, th- guys, this is one big reason that you need to turn off the computer once in a while. Okay. Go outside. Yes. Meet people in real life. Okay. Too much time on the internet will, I think, brainwash you. Yeah. Okay. So I think You'll that's You'll end up in the twin happened. flame universe. <laughs> exactly. So then this lady, she, um, she's dating this guy and then they fucking get married and yeah. shit. Cause they're like, Oh, this is your twin flame. Go get yes. married. And she's ignoring all these red flags. She's like, yeah, I mean, there were, we had so many issues, Yeah. but you know, like, and they kept saying too, they were like, they were like basically convincing her that she had to like be, be, cause she was, she had the, the, the oh, like intimacy issues, intimacy issues and stuff. And they always like labeled everyone as divine masculine, divine feminine. Oh God. And she was the divine feminine in the relationship. He was the divine masculine and, and it was her job to please her partner. And she said that he like always, always wanted to have sex and he was like getting really like aggressive with her sometimes yeah, so messed up and she was felt like she was obligated because she's you know this is her twin flame Which to like so please him up. yeah like, and, that is trauma yeah like, that's like fucked up it is and so in the back of her mind she's like thinking i'm not good enough i'm you know i need to please my twin flame yeah, yeah. so then she and then yeah so because this is like the model twin flame or whatever yeah um they become like coaches or she becomes like a main, yeah. main coach. And they go like to some, they do in-person seminars and stuff and people actually, and there was people on the show that were like, that have escaped this cult or whatever. And they were like, Oh, like I saw this girl presenting and I was like, Oh, she found her twin flame. Yes. I want her to be my coach. <clears throat> so I, exactly. so quite a lot of people would like pay her money and she started making like a full-time income off of coaching people. Yeah. About this twin flame stuff. And she initially at that point, she's like, I feel like I'm helping people, right? Like, yeah, I'm helping people find their twin flame. I'm helping them do this. And she also, like you said, brought her sister in. Yeah. So that was also really interesting because like yeah. she was saying, I think I'm sure hindsight is 2020. Mm. And at the time, maybe she was just like constantly in denial that her relationship wasn't as good as it, people thought it was. Right. But basically, yeah, they would sometimes have these like in-person seminars and they would like bring the couple on stage yeah. and be like, look, isn't this what you want? Like they, they have what you want. Mm-hmm. Therefore, like, yeah, they should be your coach. Like it's fucking insane to me. It's like asking any random person that's in a random relationship, I know. please be my coach. Like, it's so Tell crazy. me how you guys dated. You know, <laughs> exactly. Not asking if they're happy or not not asking any of that other stuff it's just, it's like, just no. assumed exactly so yeah she brought her little sister this part was oh my god so traumatized like i can't i i was fucking like so traumatized it was sad so she got into this twin flame thing and at the time i don't even th- it didn't even sound like she was really that into the idea of having a relationship mm. so she was kind of like she was 19 years old she's not like super like oh like i definitely need to like get married right now right yeah but she got into it. I can't remember exactly how, but her I think sister some guy was into like it. Message her on Facebook or something. Well, this was or... after she joined. Yeah, after she so joined. So after she joined, and she's part, of, and they went to this like physical seminar. Okay, mm. so her sister's there, and obviously, you know, her sister's probably talking up this like twin flame thing, mm. and you know, obviously, her sister is probably like, "I want you to be happy. Like, I want you to find your twin flame." So they go to the seminar, mm. and they're all kind of surrounded. And this is where all the culty shit like probably blooms right yeah because when you're physically there with everybody and you're probably having a great time you know you're chatting you're building the sense of community yeah. and you're just kind of like brainwashing people more and more in this physical in this physical group yeah and so she's sitting there and everyone's facing her and, and she starts talking and she's like yeah like i don't know they, they, they're asking her all these questions and yeah. i think they like ask her something like oh like something about twin flame she's like yeah this guy messaged me on facebook yeah so again this like just happened the night before this is the biggest thing that like, this is probably the um, most recent thing that comes to her mind. Yeah. It's just a random dude that just slid into her DMs. It sounds like. Yeah. And then they go, he's your twin flame. Yeah. <laughs> you need to find him. You need to date him. Then- he's your twin flame. And they're like, we, we've, we've just got a message from above or some <laughs> yes. shit like this. It was crazy. And he was like much older than her. Yeah. I think he was like, I don't know, like late twenties or something. Mm-hmm. I don't remember exactly, but that wasn't the big issue. The big issue is first of all, she, she was like, Again, maybe hindsight's twenty twenty, and yeah. at the time she was like so brainwashed that she was like, "Yes, this is my twin flame." Yeah, but she was like, "Yeah, it just didn't really feel right," you know. Mm. He he just felt really creepy. Yeah, exactly. He felt creepy. He lived in a different state or something. Yeah, and then also like so, so she ended up she ended up moving in. With oh my him, god, it's so crazy. Moved to across me. the country to live with. Imagine this guy. just random dude. I know that just like slid into your DM, sends you some creepy message. Yeah, and someone's like, "That's your twin flame." And then it turns out that this guy had some serious, serious um, issues. Like I think alcohol abuse problem. Like I remember if it was he, alcohol yeah, or he drugs. He wasn't working properly. Like he yeah. wasn't working. He, um, I think he had some kind of criminal record. Yeah, like he was not a good guy. Yeah, I mean, like 
we don't know that much. Like we didn't see all the details, mm. but it didn't sound like they no. had a good relationship at all. And then she would bring this up. She'd be like, this is really hard. Cause I think he did suffer maybe mental health as well or something. Oh yeah. There was some crazy shit that happened. And they were like, well, it, he's your twin flame. It's your job to make this relationship work. Like you're not working hard enough. At exactly. This. Like you need to do more. God. And she's like 19 years old. Yeah. Like, I can't even imagine. So she okay. stayed with him for like, I think four years. For a long time. Yeah. As long as she was in the twin flame thing. Yeah. Cause like, you know, cause they can't break up. Like imagine that, right? You're yeah. in this like cult where they think that they, t- they're telling you this is your twin flame. Mm. If you break up, that breaks the illusion. Yeah. So then she, they're, they also become this like model couple in yeah. this group. So now we got two sisters, both in relationships and yeah. everyone thinks, Oh my God, this is what I want. They're like, Oh God, the twin flame. It's real. Yeah. Because they're in a relationship. Like, I don't get it. Like, I know. How does it go from, like, I don't know. But it, it, it gets even crazier. Oh, so that, it, so that guys, was, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I know. So that was happening. And as this is going on, Jeff, uh, the the main guy, was getting more and more, like, cocky and arrogant. And he started, like... He's getting power trippy. Yeah, he get, got power trippy. More, more and more. And he started to, like... Because initially, they were just talking about twin flames and how the importance of finding their twin flame and all this. And then he started to get, like, almost a god complex. Like, yes. he was the one that could find out how they got their twin flame. They could find out from above. Like, all this stuff. It started getting... And, and that they should worship him. It, would be, it started to become, like, this weird, like, you listen to what I say, I make the rules. Yeah. And, and at that point... Well, I think it was already a little bit like that. But it got worse. Because like from... Yeah, exactly. It yeah. got worse and worse and worse. Because already from the beginning, they were telling people, that's your twin flame. Yeah. So that already is like a little bit... A, a yeah. much more like a God complex, but yeah. he got worse and worse. Yeah. And he was like... He was like making rules and like dictating a lot of stuff. And <clears throat> like it got crazy. Like I remember this whole basically... After the year, so a lot of people were in this program for a year, right? Right. And you know you're guaranteed to find your twin flame. Well, oh, what, yeah, because they, they're like, we guarantee exactly. when you take this course, mm. you're going to find your twin flame. And a bunch of people along the way. So obviously there was loads of people on this course and on, uh, doing interviews and stuff where, you know, Jeff and Shalila or whatever would be like, this is your twin flame. Go and, uh, you know, go after this person. And then people were getting like restraining orders yeah. and all this other crazy shit was happening because it obviously wasn't. These were people that like, you know, had broken up and they're moving on in yes. their life. And people were like messaging this, these like twin flame members and being like, you're fucking crazy leave yeah. me alone and they're like you got to try harder you got to try harder with them they're just they're just pushing you away because they don't know how much they love you and like, one of them went to jail because she broke a restraining order i know it's crazy because they would follow what they were saying and then when they when she got out of jail they're like we're so proud of you um but it gets even it's so insane it, it does so after about a year people start to get frustrated right like some of the people in the group because at, they've got to the year point they haven't found their twin flame the guarantee was there they're like okay what's going on and at this time they also, the group was primarily female, right? Like there wasn't as many yes. guys in this group as there was female. And they they started doing these workshops on like divine masculine, divine feminine, again, adding more courses that they can charge people for, yes. which is so fucked up. And they started to like... Basically what they wanted to do mm. was they initially, because like, uh, they can't just like randomly be like, that's your twin flame. So they started twin flaming the people that were members in the okay? group. Yeah. So, which might work if there's an equal number of, you know, like heterosexual males to mm. heterosexual females. Yeah. Um, and, but they, like you said, started running out of women, uh, running out of men very quickly. Cause mm. most people that are in this course are women. Yeah. So now at this point they start, and I can't remember why, maybe because they wanted to keep it in the cult. Maybe that's why they kept yeah. matching members to members. That's probably why, because it's easier to manipulate. It's easier oh, for, for sure. Because then if you're like, oh, that's your twin flame, then they can just be together and then you don't have to deal with like restraining orders and yeah. fucking people getting arrested and all this crazy shit. Yeah. So now, yeah, they're starting to match people in this member group. But then because there aren't enough, um, because, like, a lot of the women were straight as well. Like, it yeah. was... Yeah, exactly. Like, probably the majority of the women were straight. 100%. So, they wanted to find men, but there aren't men in the in the Twin Flame universe. There were some, but not There many. were some. Not enough. Yeah. So, then, they start telling people, they're like, actually, um, everyone has, no matter what, like, actual, like, assigned gender you are, mm. everyone has a divine masculine energy and a divine feminine energy, or a divine yeah. feminine and divine masculine in a twin flame couple. Mm. There's never, like, you know, two divine feminines or two divine masculines. Yeah. So one is a feminine and one is a masculine. Mm. And they start just randomly matching people to yeah. feminine and masculine. Yeah, they assign people. Like, oh. you're, you're feminine, you're masculine. And the funny thing is, too, like... Before that happened, I guess there was quite a few, not quite a few, but there was some like trans people that had joined the group 
And initially, yeah. they were like, wow, we love like Jeff and Shalila because they were very opening. And this one trans woman was on there and she was like, I felt really welcomed because they were like, you're right, de- you're, the you're, trans you're, women. Yeah, yeah, I remember now. They're like, you're defined feminine, blah, 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 all this stuff. Like they were just like very like welcoming and stuff. Mm. But then she was saying, she's like, what what's fucked up is she said, what I didn't realize is they were just being like stereotypical society anyway to be like, you're defined masculine, you're defined feminine. Right. And they were like assigning this to people like women. They'd be like, oh, Rose. <laughs> you have masculine energy <laughs> so you're defined masculine yeah and then they would and again at first i thought when they started mentioning this divine masculine mm. feminine stuff i just thought oh maybe they're just that's just like the i don't know that's just like the the label that they're putting on yeah. these people and they're not necessarily expecting you to do much no they start all again i think it's like a power trip thing they yeah. just keep adding more and more layers to this so initially they were like okay divine masculine divine feminine whatever and then at, some, at one point, they just like matched everybody. They were like, yeah. okay, you you belong with this person. You belong yeah. with this person. All of these random couples, some of which were like, no, 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 I'm straight. Yeah. I like men. Yeah. Why are you matching me with a, a woman? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the, all this crazy shit started happening. And then, and then, then they start actually expecting people to go through gender reassignment. reassignment. Yeah. They're like, oh, no. yeah. And some people went deep into it. Like there was. Oh, there's still people that are like still doing it. Yeah, there was one of the moms. It was so sad because they were interviewing like the moms oh and stuff of some of these kids. That the like, parents are was so sad. Oh, and she's like, I just want to talk to my my daughter. Like, I just want to have a conversation with her. And the one mom, like the main mom that was speaking out about this, she had two twin daughters, and one of them, oh. both of them, went into twin flames. Yes. One of them got no, out. No, no, I don't think they both went in. I think her sister did too. I think they both did. I thought it was just, no, I I think it was just the one. Oh, just the sister. Yeah, because I remember they were saying how like every time she'd be over at the house, she'd be like in her room, like doing something on the computer. Mm. Yeah. So the other sister never went into the Okay, I thought she did for some reason. But yeah, anyway, so the mom had two twin daughters. One of them went into the twin flames. She's still in there. I actually, actually after the documentary, I went on their website. Yeah. And I went to look at the consultants and she's still a consultant. Oh, no. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, this is so sad. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, the mom had like written a letter to her daughter, all this other stuff. And like her daughter like eventually wrote back and was like, leave me alone. Like, I don't yeah. want, I'm done with you. Like, and also another thing that they did too, before it got to this gender reassignment and stuff, we missed one little part as well, where they got this like lady from the military that does, oh. that does like trauma treatment therapy or something where basically she'll like sit with you and she'll be like, okay, Rose, <laughs> let's talk about your problems. Let's figure it out. Even and though she has no credentials exactly. to do this. And then what she would do for like 95% of these people is she would say, oh, there's an issue in your childhood. Your parents treated you badly because they want to isolate these people from their families, right? right? So they'd be like, oh, you know, there's actually, there's this one girl. She, they told her the one that actually got, had the restraining order. <clears throat> Oh God! <laughs> Pardon me. The restraining order went to prison. Um, they had told her that she had some like sexual trauma in her childhood. Oh, they're just making shit up. And they made it up. And she's like, she's like, but but when they said that, she's like, I don't remember that happening. But I started to feel anger towards my parents. Like I was like, did this happen? Like I don't know. Like is this something I've just like blacked out? Like you know, because that my, that does happen. It does. There there could be situations. Yeah, where, where you just forget your body, your mind kind of blocks it mm-hmm. to try to help you like recover and cope. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so they'll try to, they'll do this, like isolate people, right? They're like, Oh, you have family trauma. They did it with this, this, this twin girl. Yes. That's why she didn't want to talk to her mom. Well, and then they kind of like encourage you. And this is a very cult practice. Very cult. They encouraged her to like, basically, you know, cut the family off Yes, because they weren't supportive of her twin flame journey. Exactly. So then she wrote this like long letter, like explaining like, why she was cutting them off and you know no more contact blah 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 which is obviously like so fucking sad and traumatizing like could you imagine your child messaging you and all you want to do is like shake them and wake them up exactly and be like what the fuck are you doing and you get a letter from them to be like yeah sorry like or not sorry this is my journey you don't respect my journey i never want to talk to you again yeah it's so sad. That lady on the documentary too was, oh my God. She was like hilarious. She and I was. Loved her. She was like, you know what? I don't give a fuck. I'm going to yeah. talk out on this documentary <laughs> yeah, because yeah. if they come after me, they've already taken one of my daughters. Exactly. What else can they do? And she had, I think she hadn't spoken to her daughter for like four years or something. It was so sad because she was like, I think this is one of the first scenes mm. or that she came out. She was like, she was like smoking a cigarette and she was like the day after she was like, I had quit smoking the mm. day before I got the letter. And then that day I started smoking again because oh, she was like, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. Yeah. Um, so basically, yeah. So anyway, 
oh yeah so like basically yeah they brought in this like someone that seems authoritative yeah because she's from the military exactly. she like you know so, so someone that seems like they know what they're talking about yeah and they're using her to kind of again she's like a coach or something yeah and um they're using her to basically yeah isolate people more and mm. make people feel like they need this like twin flame <coughs> universe more yeah. and as this is going on too right oh, so God. they so, so they have happens. oh god it's crazy so as this is going on they have her doing these like sessions for people they have more and more people that are becoming coach certified coaches there's different yeah. levels of coaching it's basically a multi-level marketing it's game. starting to turn into an MLM yeah. like it's like quickly snowballing and they turn it into a fucking religion so that yes because I guess if you're a religion you're like what is it like tax exempt or yes there's some kind of benefit to it right like mm. i think it's the tax of something yeah. or like whatever so then they turned it into a religion so that they could like i don't know make more money or <laughs> but i think if they get audited like it, I, I do feel like but i don't know if the church well, it's do this hard too. it's hard to like prove right? right but i mean if they're charging so much money for a course online i feel like that's getting less into religion and more into like yeah i don't really how that works yeah that's where it feels a bit but what about like like what's the fucking religion where you have to pay money like mormonism or something yeah but you're donating it to the church for them to like they could say it like that that's true i don't know you're but 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 uh, i know i know know. it's a tough one like because jeff he's like look i look like jesus oh yeah (laughs) he's like i look like jesus you need to worship me like it's so bad It's crazy. And then they'll like, they'll like they really seem like they're joking half the time. I know. And they like really prey on people though. Like you watch oh, some of the playback so videos and they're like, you're fucking stupid. Like, why didn't you listen to us? Oh, you should be doing this. Yeah. And then Shalila will say, he'll be like, he'll be like shut up. Sh- Sh- Shalila. Yeah. Like, I'm talking right now. A man's no, talking. A man. Know your place. Oh my God. Um, and, like, it's just so fucked up. And I'm like, I, I, I just like, I wonder like how hard it would be to slip into that. Like that's what I, I wish there was more studies done on cults. Cause I do find it very interesting in terms of oh, like cults are so interesting, human psychology. And like, I wonder like, you know, if I could slip into a cult, I think anyone could, I yeah. think there's a possibility, because but I think the conditions have to be right. The conditions have yeah. to be right. And like I said, you kind of have, that's why you need to be isolated. That's why that's so important for most cults mm. to isolate their members. Because yeah. once you start, you know, interacting with others, that's when you start realizing, Oh mm. shit. Am I fucking like in a cult? <laughs> but then it but then it becomes hard to leave because if you isolate yourself and your only friends or, exactly. or your only people are people within the cult and also another telltale sign of a cult versus any other organization. Like if you like, for example, if I left a club, I would still be friends with the people at the club. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's not like they would just all of a sudden be like shun me. Yes. But th- that's a key indicator of a cult is like when you leave. Yeah. Every single person in that cult will no longer talk to you. Right. That's You're a like, huge sign. There, yes. There's like a wall up. Whereas it's like if you just did like a like let's say you took a Spanish course or something. You become yeah. friends with the people in the course yeah. with you. You're going to still talk to them. Like it's not like a thing. Whereas always with a cult that's another telltale yeah, sign. yeah yeah huge sign because huge then they're sign. like oh they left the cult they're no longer you know yeah part of our journey or whatever oh, you know god they'll distract from your journey you know you don't want any negative energy suckers falling <laughs> and then even even though it's crazy it's like neither of them were that charismatic i was like yeah that's what i thought too i would watch them talk and i'm like god i would you just actually... sound like some random dude that works in like software engineering yeah like doing a fucking Zoom presentation. Like, oh, I like. I kind of like wish that I just got on one of those random Zoom calls. Just because I see. would call him the fuck out <laughs> would, as he's saying stuff. I'd be like, "Are you fucking and kidding like, Daniel, me, Daniel? You're not respecting my authority." They would mute me and kick me out of the Zoom. Yes, absolutely. That's what would happen, mm-hmm. right? Like, but I'd be like, "Guys, can everyone just wake up on this call? These people are idiots." Oh my like, god, what seriously. The fuck? Yeah, I don't I don't know exactly this like the entire psychology behind mm. it. Um but yeah, I think A they make you feel welcome. So in yeah. the beginning like, again, like in a world where people are lacking community, yeah. they're feeling lonely, whatever it is, they make you feel welcome like yeah. you're part of the group. Like, yeah. oh my god, now you have this new family, all of these new friends, like oh my god, how amazing is that? Yeah. And secondly, they fill some kind of void that you're looking for, right? Like yeah. either twin flames or maybe you're looking for some answers like as to why you're on this earth or mm. whatever it is. Like they, they give you whatever answers that you want to hear. Yeah. Other than that, I don't fucking know what it is. Yeah. And then they just, they, well, they, there's, they do other steps too, right? Like isolating you. Like I think a big part of it is yeah, isolation. Isolation is huge. Because the thing is, I think to myself, like, yeah, maybe anyone could fall into a cult, but I think if you have a really good group of friends around you exactly. and you're close to your family, it's less likely to happen because what would happen is like, let's say you I tell them the story. Exactly. I would join it and I'd be like, Oh, this twin flame course is so cool. I would tell Rose and Rose would be like, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> 
Um, and then I'll be like, okay, cool. Like, and I'd, I'd question it more. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Whereas if I didn't have that sound check and balance, I'd be like, oh, exactly. I would just spiral into my own thoughts and into this fucking cult. And I think a part of it is once you've joined it for a while, right? And you've been in it for like a little bit. Then it's like you almost have this. I don't know. There's like a. I think there's a term for this where you want to believe it because mm. you've been in it for so long. Yeah. And you don't ever want to like admit that you were like well, tricked into being in a cult. Yeah. So then you're you've you start to convince yourself mm. that this is legitimate. And also, I think, and this was the case in a lot of people with the twin flame is they've also invested a shit ton of money. It, that's right? a huge. They, thing. They've spent huge so thing. much money to find their twin yep. flame. They don't want to leave now because then all that money is money wasted. It's a sunk cost. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's like now I've put you know. 40 grand into this and I haven't found my twin flame yet but if I leave now like what if I'm so close to finding my twin flame yeah, yeah. if I leave now all that's gone yeah. right um it was fucking sad. so fucked up yeah so then now all of these random couples most of which are probably heterosexual women yes. with other heterosexual women now they they've been randomly assigned you're a divine masculine you're a divine feminine yeah so you got people transitioning yeah oh this one, I was like, this can't get any crazier. I know this one lady, well, like her, like now son. Yeah, she's like, I want to respect my son. I know they were so sweet too. The moms. Yeah, they were like, I and she kept they were trying so hard he. to refer to yeah. them. Because because I think Which, they were thinking uh, yeah. too. They were like maybe there was. She's like I never like when when she was my daughter. She never exhibited signs like exactly. that. She ever wanted to do this? Like it mm-hmm. was never a thing. But she's like maybe out of respect, you know, like yeah, yeah, totally. you know, he's my son now, and if that was his oh choice. God. But like you know, honestly, that's so fucked. Can you imagine if I, I want to be on two camps here? There could be a fact that actually they wanted to do get a sex change the whole time and it wasn't part of the cult. So there's that's, that camp, I, right? Yeah. That's a very small possibility. I know. But then I, I'm on the with the other and I'm not with the other camp, but on the other camp, yeah. how fucked up is uh-huh. it gonna be when they wake up yep. out of that cult, yep. look back, and they're yep. like, Holy fuck, what have I done? Exactly. I've literally transformed like, my body. I've I've taken all kinds of hormones. I've done irreversible procedures. Yes. Yeah. Yep. It's so fucked up. It's actually like, like that's sad. I know I was because like they th- some of these people have gone like so, they've done all kinds of surgery. Someone someone had a mastect- double yes. mastectomy where yep. they like chopped off their boobs or yep. whatever. That's a extreme procedure. And the mom. Oh, my God. Th- this mom was so fucking like I mm. felt so bad for her because she was like again, she was like trying so hard to like respect the you know, her pronouns, p- the pronouns, yeah. his pronouns. But at the same time, it's like you kind of know that they're part of this cult. Yeah. So it's like how like. That's really hard to accept because it's like, mm. obviously she's, I think if her, her, you know, daughter decided, you know, in a normal situation, yeah. oh, like I want to transition. This mom would have been supportive. Of 100%. course. She would have been like, you know what? Do it. hundred percent. And you know what was really intense is the one mom that they were interviewing. Her son was texting, was texting her. So her son's starting to wake up from this. Yes. Right. And he was like, he was like, but so- was it, was it a daughter initially? Or- yes. Yes. Yeah. So it was her daughter before. Now he's just had a sex change. He's her son. And he was texting her and he was saying to her and she was like crying. She's like, this is the first communication we've had in yeah. years. And he was like basically reaching out to her. Like, And she was like being quite careful because yeah. she didn't want to like push, push him, away. him away. Yeah. So she's responding, but she's like, I need, I don't know how to s- respond properly. Because without, without, because you say exactly. one wrong thing and they're going to be like, oh God. It's so fucked up. It's so fucked up. And then the, the, the thing that also really got me and it was like super emotional is that when the, because both the sisters got out. You know? Yes. And so, do we remember why and how exactly? So, at one point, the I can't remember. The older sister got out first. Yeah. And I can't remember exactly what w- woke her up, mm. but it took a long time because a lot but of she people started, left before her. She, she. This is true. I think she started. I think because she she naturally started waking because her and her bo- partner split up. Yeah. And the, she started like to be like, hang on a second, like. She started, is not right. she started yeah. to feel not good about it. A lot of it, like even Jeff's teachings were getting a bit more crazy yeah. and all this stuff. And she's like, this is feeling like something's not right here. Yeah. She started getting that feeling in her, yeah. in her gut. I can't remember exactly how she got out, mm-hmm. but she did. And then she ended up, um, like picking up her sister. Mm. Cause her sister was living in a different state. I think Yeah, she went and got her sister. That was, was like, her, her first thing that she did. She's like, we need to get her. We need mm. to get her. She got her sister out of the relationship and gone. Yeah. And then they haven't spoken since. Yeah. Cause then, cause then this would happen. And it's so sad. It's so sad. But basically she moved into, I don't remember where she lives and stuff. And she's like, I really want to try it. Like they were both talking and the sister, obviously <laughs> they both have so much trauma. Yeah. But the sister is like, not, it's not that she, she blamed. never really blamed. Yeah, she didn't blame her sister for bringing her in, but I think 
because of everything that has happened, she needs time. She was saying she needs time to process it because she's not the same person. Exactly. And like right now she's just not in a place to have this relationship with her sister because of everything that's happened and like all this crazy shit, like her being in that abusive and crazy relationship. Yeah. And so, and her sister was like so sad because she's like, I did this. And she's like, she's like, I brought my sister in and I also coach people. She like met people that she coached and was like crying. Oh my God. That was so sad. And then it was all, it it touched me because the late, one of the ladies that she coached in the very beginning who also got out. Who uh, also was, uh, assigned, uh, a masculine. divine masculine. Yeah, she's like you're divine masculine. So she started doing some kind of. I, I don't think she did, went too far. Thank I think God. She's hormone, maybe hormone. Yeah, therapy. she probably started doing some hormones or doing something. And for her, it was like she was already bisexual. Yeah, so it's even more probably confusing. It was almost. confusing because they're like you're divine masculine. She's like, am I? Maybe I am. I guess. Like I don't know. Yeah. I like guys and girls. Like yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Um, but she was really sweet and I really appreciate it. And this is what I mean. Like these are genuine people. Like these aren't like, you know, these, know. these are everyday people, but she met the one, um, this, this bisexual lady, they, they met for like coffee or something. Yeah. Cause she was the coach. Yeah. She was her coach. Yeah. And she was like, I want to apologize. Like, I'm so sorry. And then the lady was like, look, I know that you were trying to help people yeah. and you were in it too. Like yeah, you were we, also, we all were in it. Like, she's like, I have no ill will towards you. And they had like a hug and stuff and they were like oh, both it was crying. So sweet. And I was like, that's so nice because I think there's some people out there that would blame them. And oh, it's totally. like, it's like, you have to understand everybody was subject to fucking the only people that I want to blame yeah. are Jeff and Shalila, because I can guarantee you yeah. that they know what they're doing. I wonder what about that therapist person from the military? I don't know. I was kind of like, Oh, I don't know. That lady is not sitting right with me. People, um, do crazy um, things for money yeah but that, that that's why it's it's to blame yeah. that's what i mean yeah like, yeah yeah I'm that's not, what I mean. i'm not saying she was what i'm saying is she was brain she wasn't brainwashed i don't right, right. think yeah yeah i don't think she was so that's the thing it's like yeah so and somebody said somebody that kind of like knows about cults they were like this is the thing about cults you kind of become one of the culprits yes when you are part of it because naturally as being part of the cult you can you start doing things that mm. you know that harm other people right because like in order to keep people in the cult, you have to start doing all these things. It's yes. not things that you're necessarily doing on purpose. Mm. Um, so I think that's what's like extra hard for that uh, for that sister, the older sister. Yeah. Well, a little bit on a side note, mm. but kind of. I mean, not not a cult at all, but like kind of similar, <laughs> not similar concept, but. <laughs> So a little bit, not a cult at all, but kind of a cult. Not a similar concept, but kind of a similar concept. Okay, what is it, Daniel? it's not funny but it's funny it's it's not funny at all <laughs> um but i watched a documentary about this well it's a it's a, a, a movie based on <laughs> is it a documentary it's not or a documentary not a- <laughs> it's a movie based on a uh, true story <laughs> oh god i don't know well, why Daniel, i'm like that. that is my favorite moment <laughs> um so basically <laughs> basically this lady got into she got sex trafficked but not sex trafficked. no she did get sex trafficked <laughs> And her way of like getting out or how she like basically mm. found a way to get out is she actually had to eventually like work with these people and get to like a senior level oh. within the organization. So she was like doing things that she looks back on. She's like, I can't believe I did this stuff. But, but I, she knew what she was doing at the she, time. She did because she, she wanted, wanted to get out. To get out. Yeah. Interesting. So it was slightly different. But I, and I think obviously with a cult, but it's the same kind of concept in the sense that like you're doing things that you wouldn't normally do. Like yeah, yeah. It, it, for an end goal because you're part of a cult, whatever. Because the thing is people do sometimes – do things that we wouldn't do in a normal circumstance. Well, that's the thing. This is not a normal cir- circumstance. Exactly. It's like if I ended up in prison, there's probably stuff I'd do in prison that I would never do there's in real life. There's stuff that would happen to you in prison. Oh, God damn. <laughs> anyway. My body never be the same. Oh, God damn. Um, so, okay. And that's kind of like what happened in this. Like, mm. I mean, obviously this is just like a, you got, you, you got to see the, the documentary. Yeah. Um, but it's still apparently happening and they haven't been able to, uh, like arrest them or find any faulty. I know in this it? is the hard part is like, they're not able, I think they're still going through court pro- proceedings yeah. because a lot of these people, the one girl, I fucking loved her. She was the one that was like living with her parents and they basically told her to go after this ex that had a restraining order. Oh yeah. She ended up going to prison. <laughs> then she got out of the cult. I can't, so crazy. I can't remember exactly how she got out of the cult, but then she's like, I am going to fuck these people up. Yeah. So now it's like her life mission. She like Good. got documents. She's pulling all this stuff together. So she's working really, really hard to like basically shed light. And that's why she part- she was part of the documentary yeah, as well. Yeah, Cause yeah. she's like, I want more and more people to see this because actually the thing is with these documentaries is it can help people. Oh, for sure. So like people could watch this. Like even if you're, 
you know, let's say you're with Jeff and Shalila and then you go onto Netflix yeah, and yeah. it's escaping twin flames with Jeff and Shalila. You're yeah. like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. So it will help people, I think. And it's like, it's like, for example, <clears throat> there was another documentary, um, the Tinder swindler, that guy that right. was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and as soon as his, not the documentary, but as soon as his story broke and these two girls came together, published his story, it went viral. It actually ended yeah. up getting him caught. People, totally. he couldn't manipulate the women anymore. So yeah. I feel like, I feel like now because of this documentary, I feel like there's, even though they still have their website, they still are operating in some capacity. I think this is going to be detrimental. Oh, I think so for sure. Because now it's like, yeah. So now it, they need more members to join, right? But yeah. no, more members are probably not going to join no. because of this situation. Well, think about it. Now, if you Google Twin Flames, exactly. what's going to come up? Exactly. The Twin Flame website and Escaping Twin exactly. Flames. <laughs> so, exactly. like, you're like, because it's like when you, like, for example, anytime you go to get a product, well, not anytime, yeah. but, like, sometimes you'll, like, read reviews online. Mm-hmm. So, like, you're like, hey, I'm thinking of paying, especially if you're paying $4,000 yeah. for a course, you're like, I'm going to look at some online reviews. Oh, it's a cult? Fuck yeah, that shit. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Whereas before, it's kind of like, oh, what is this course? Exactly. Oh, this course oh, could be, find my I'm twin gonna flame. Find, I'm going to find my soulmate. Oh, God damn. Lord Jesus. And then, and also the thing is, they the, throughout the, the thing, they change things, too. Because at first, they were like, you yeah. only have one twin flame. But then after that one girl that was a coach. Got arrested or something? Oh, a no. different one. The girl with the coat and the rest of one. But the, oh, yeah. The girl that was the, one of the, um, what is it? Protégé couples or whatever. Who they broke up. They broke up. Right. And then they were like, no, you actually have more than one twin. Friend. Right. Because then they, that fits they, their agenda. They alter the narrative to fit whatever yeah. whatever they're doing. So like, oh, actually. And same with that girl that had the restraining order. All that yeah. shit happened. Like, no, you actually have more than one twin flame. Like, we're just oh kidding from before. It's so you know? messed up. Like, and that's another thing too, is if you're following something, like, I'm sorry, like, I, again, I believe that, you know, anybody could be manipulated into a cult. I think to myself though, like if I had joined and the, and, and throughout the teachings keep changing and it keeps weaving a weird mm. and they're contradicting stuff they said before, like, I would be like, well, you said this before though. Yeah. Like, I'm not the kind of person that's going to be like, Hey, like. Yeah. okay cool now we have unlimited twin flames before you just said <laughs> exactly. before you were so adamant that we had one why did you say that before yeah you know well, some people just don't question authority that's this another is, thing this is true and it's so like it's so messed up and I, well i remember one girl that she um she was assigned you know she was assigned like divine uh, female Masculine. i don't know what she was assigned. and then she got out didn't she yeah she was like this is bullshit yeah <laughs> She basically, yeah. She was like, no. She's like, no, I like men. I'm straight. Yeah. And then they're like, no, but you're, you know, like, this is your twin flame. She's like, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> and, she, like, and then left. she laughed. I was like, oh, thank God. Yeah. But, 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 but that sounds like common sense to me. But yeah. it's like when you're so deep into it. Yeah. And you kind of see these people as like gods. That's the issue. When you start to idolize these people. Mm as gods for whatever the fuck reason i really hope this documentary's fucked up their business so bad oh i mean i i don't yeah for sure yeah. i think it, it must have it must have i like, really hope and i hope that that lady that was getting texts from her son oh my god i really that they hope. reconnect yeah. she gets him out of there and then they have a real discussion around if this whole sex change and, and oh, was god. what he actually wanted or was it something that he was pressured to do with the cult see that's also hard to come to terms with because yeah. she, he's already done it right yeah. so then at that point you're like it, maybe that is what I wanted. You know, your mind is, it, it's such a, you know, fickle thing, you know? Yeah. You can start to tell you, you can tell yourselves anything. And you can start to believe it. Exactly. So. Oh God. Do you know much about the um, Jonestown cult? Mm-hmm. Oh my God. You need to look into that shit. God damn it. You don't, you don't know about this? No. God damn it. What the Jonestown cult? You've never is. heard of it. I probably have, but it's, it's like. It's like the one that where they did like a mass suicide. Oh my God, you need to look into that one. Mm. I wish I didn't tell you that end oh, because... Damn, that's, I mean, mic drop right there. Well, it's a Fuck. really... It's like one of the more famous cults. And like, seriously, go home right now and watch a documentary on this. It's on Netflix? It, I'm sure there's multiple documentaries on like all the platforms. There okay. must be some something that's on that's my homework tonight guys i'm gonna watch that and guys <laughs> on that positive on that note, positive note guys, i'm tired of talking about join cults. a cult okay yeah. try to i think i think the important thing and i think we talk about this always in the podcast is like is when you are presented with something i'm not saying challenge everything right mm. but like when you're presented with things that maybe seem too good to be true or like like question it a little bit you know like maybe just think about it think about what's think going about on the motive as well follow the money exactly follow the money think about a lot of different things like if someone's like hey i'm gonna find you love i guarantee it like <laughs> i'm sorry question it if, if, again How do you guarantee it exactly it's like these it's like anything that like 
tries to hit certain things like finding love or, you know, getting taking you, you to heaven. Yeah. Taking you to heaven, getting you rich really fast. Yeah. Like all of this stuff, question the fuck out of it. Mm-hmm. Because if it's, if it's, if it's looks like a scam, it walks like a scam. It's probably a scam. It's probably a scam. <laughs> if it looks like a cult, smells like a cult, acts like a cult, probably a probably cult. Probably a cult. So exactly. Just, just to be careful yeah. out there, people. All right, you guys, thank you so much for listening. Mm-hmm. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let us know what you think in mm-hmm. the YouTube comments down below. If you're watching mm-hmm. on YouTube, if you've seen this documentary, what are your thoughts? What Offload do you on think? us. Tell us, guys. Tell us everything, okay? Mm-hmm. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you're watching it on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Mm-hmm. Make, make sure you follow us on all of the podcast platforms. Give us a rating. Five stars, always. And what else, Daniels? And also, guys, obviously check out our Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash the Savage Podcast for exclusive content, uh, all content ad free. You get it a week before uh, the public and lots of other little little perks and things. In yeah. There. And bonus episodes mm-hmm. every single month, you guys. And let us know um, if you found your twin flame. <laughs> oh, God damn. I think I'm going to I'm going to sign up for the twin flame I think, universe. I think, I think you should. I kind of almost want to do it for shits and giggles, but I, <laughs> I'm not spending four grand hey, on that that's shit. The thing. So. This is, that's the biggest red flag. It's oh, the money. God. Exactly. Okay. I'm like, mm, no. Always follow the money. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye.